On today's episode, we are going to be working in the shower, which is extremely small, so filming is going to be difficult, but I'll try to make do. Um, what we're going to be doing is prepping this shower for tile, and then hopefully tomorrow, um, which might be one video for you guys, but uh, hopefully tomorrow I'll be starting to install some tile. So today is all about prep. We're using a couple different products. We're using zip caulking for sealing our material together. And we're also using Curdy Board, which if you haven't watched my last episode, I strongly recommend you go check out my last episode, um, which goes a little bit more into depth on Curdy Board and materials that I like to use, things like that. So um, this is their half inch product and you can buy it in four by eight sheets. It's super lightweight. Um, I don't know, it, it weighs next to nothing, but it's a good product, it waterproofs well, and it allows for some movement. So I think that that's key for an RV build, and that's what we're gonna do, so let's get after it. So here's a full sheet of Curdy, and my first cut here is going to be uh, 75 and a half inches tall by 34 and a half wide. So, like I said, this stuff's really easy to work. Um, you can simply take your measurement. Mark it uh, with your knife, pencil, whatever. And then these grid lines, you can just follow them very easily. So once you've got your piece cut with your grid line, then you just come behind it like a piece of drywall, pop it, and then come back and score it from the bottom. That's it. So that's our 75 and a half. And then our other dimension is 34 and a quarter. Same thing, pop it, then run your razor knife down the back side. There we go. All right, so here's a trick that um, rarely has to be used, but in this case it does. We've got our piece of curdy board that has to go through that hole. That's this big, okay? There is no combination of ways for me to get this thing in this bathroom. So what you do is you take your razor knife and along the back of the board, so not this side, but the back, you go ahead and you scribe halfway through the material in a straight line, and then go ahead and pop it. We can fold it now, get it into our bathroom, and then once we're in our bathroom, we can simply unfold it and uh, go ahead and install it. And you could do that two or three times if you had to. So. We've kept a continuous face. The outermost face is a continuous waterproof membrane. Um, yes, we did have to cut through the foam, but we didn't cut through the membrane, so we're still fully waterproofed, and that allowed us to get our material into a smaller space. So it's a good trick to know. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get this uh, back wall wrapped up here using our zip caulking. The other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have a very um, good bead in the corner that will actually squish out when you push your wall sheet into the wall sheet next to it. Then you can clean that up with a putty knife.
And that's that. I like to hit it in um, to get the adhesive to just kind of spread out and make good adhesion to the back of the board. Now I'll just go ahead and put the screws and washers in and then move on to the next panel. All right, so now it's time to move on to the part that most of you are probably most excited for, and that's gonna be the pan. Now, the shower pan is a product made by Curdy, um, or Schluter Dietra, I should say, and their product is called the Curdy Line Drain. It comes in many different variations and widths, and what it is is it's a linear trench drain that you can tile right into your shower pan. So essentially what we'll be doing is we'll use, be using mortar and we'll mortar down the pan and I'll be using the zip flashing caulk, which like I've said in other videos, you know, this is my experience that um, I use these caulking materials. This is not the recommended procedure to installing the Schluter system. Schluter uses only mortars, they use flashing tapes, they use um, methods that I don't particularly like because with every layer of flashing tape and mortar that you add you build out material so your wall and your corners your inside corners are no longer flat so to get a perfectly square perfectly straight true wall you have to add a lot of mud to build that out so that's the reason why I prefer the caulking I also prefer caulking because it's flexible and mortar doesn't have the flexibility that caulking does that's why I use the zip caulking and that being said we're we're getting into the Schluter Curdy Line drain we are I just got it unboxed I got a hole cut in the floor for it and uh, so pretty much what's included in the box is you get a fern co fitting which this is just a two inch fern co that allows you to go to either two inch ABS or two inch PVC you get a styrofoam um, shim I guess you would call it and all this does is support the drain so you're actually gonna um, take this double stick tape off and then you're gonna stick this to the back of the drain and then during the installation you'll thin set it all into place so this is a shim spacer um, whatever we're calling that and then this here this is the actual drain body so this is not the drain grate this is just the drain body this is the first part of uh, what you would call a two-part system I guess so the fern co slides over here and then you drop this whole assembly down into your shower pan area and then you take this fabric you fold it back I don't want to open it all the way because I'd like it to be folded up for now and then you can see it folds back and then you thin set this drain um, this flashing material directly onto the shower pan so we've got that and then uh, that's really all that's included in that box. You buy the drain grates um, separately. There's a few different types. There's tile top, um, and then there's two like etched metal styles that like one's a cross, um, like crosses, and then the other one is some kind of weird paisley design kind of thing. So anyway, those are your drain options. And um, next we'll move on to getting the shower pan unpackaged and get that thing installed. So here's our shower pan, and this is just called the Curdy Shower, I believe. Yeah, Schluter Curdy Shower. And this product is the exact same material as you would find in the Curdy board, whether it be the big thick one that we used on the countertop or the thinner version that we're using on the shower walls. Essentially, proprietarily, it's the same product, just shaped differently. So what this is, is this is a pre-sloped board. Um, so it's got a recess and we can go ahead and unpackage it here maybe and these shower pans um they rarely have the size that you actually need so be prepared to spend a few hundred dollars on a shower pan when you only need like a quarter of it which sucks but I think they kind of do that um, to force people to spend a little more money so here's the pan here's the back of it this is folded in half currently as you unfold it you'll see that this edge is about three quarters of an inch thick yet this edge is about oh, two inches thick so we're going from about three quarters to two inches over the course of 
um, 40 inches or 39 inches. So you unfold it, and here's our shower pan. And then when you do unfold this for real, there usually is double stick tape, and this one doesn't have it. So don't worry about that. Um, so you unfold these, and then this is the pan just as you're going to install it. The first few inches of this pan, so right here, this first four inches is flat. And what that's for is that's recess for that drain. So you can actually notch out the width of your drain out of this, and then the pan will continue along the sides if your drain is much smaller than your space. Or if your drain is the exact same, same size as your space, you can cut this front section off. So if you land, let's say you buy your drain before you build your shower, and you know that you're gonna have a 43 inch wide shower and your drain is 43 inches wide, you just cut this whole first four inches off and then boom, you're right into slope and it works out perfectly. Sometimes, I actually leave this um, just so that way there's a place for the mud to go. Like I said, I don't like buildup of mud, that's a pet peeve of mine. But, um, so sometimes I'll leave a couple inches of this to get that initial mud adhesion going between the drain flange and the shower pan and it gives a place for that mud to sit. Because this is actually, I don't think you can see it, but this is like an eighth inch. Right here there's a line and it's about an eighth inch lower on this side than it is on this side. So you get a little bit of uh, depth there. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing cut to size. We're gonna get the drain mocked up in place. You always mock everything up before you thin set anything down and uh, dry fit, of course, and then we'll go from there. All right, so here's our mocked up shower pan. And what we've got here is we went ahead and cut. You'll see on these corners, I went ahead and took a three quarters of an inch, wrapped it around the back side of the drain. That way it was a full fill. This is that fabric that will then fold out and that'll get thin set it down like so. Um, I've also got a huge piece missing. And there's probably people of course that are gonna say, well why is that missing? Well, the reason for this is this spot here is actually where the base of the toilet sets. So when the toilet is installed, I can't have it be on a slope because I need equal weight distribution across the base to keep it uh, sturdy and everything. So what I'm going to do back here is I'm going to use a piece of uh, two inch curdy board and I'm going to mount it there. So it'll go from, it'll go from a flat plane. 10 and 5 eighths of an inch out to the here. And then from this point to the drain is about 23 inches. And that's actually gonna be the only sloped portion. So the portion under the toilet won't be sloped. And then I've yet to cut, I wrote myself some notes, I've gotta cut a spot here. And that will be where the cassette will be removed after the toilet is filled up. And of course the 12 volt wire to power it. So. That's uh, the next step, and now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get that 2 inch cut, and then we'll start thin setting things into place. Alright, so the first step to this is getting the drain installed. Um, the drain, like I said, is uh, styrofoam, this piece, and the drain flange itself. So I went ahead and got my fern co here, and my piece of PVC stubbed out of my fern co, and I pre primed it because I have zero tolerance really around it. Um, my gray water tank is going to push right into this fitting. So, and my gray water tank is actually made out of PVC. So I need to make, I had to ass fully assemble this before I drop it through the floor. That way when I go to push my gray water tank up into it with the PVC glue on it, it will, um, be pre-primed. So we went ahead and pre-primed this guy. Now it's time to get it installed and we got some thin set mixed up. And the first step is to go ahead and get some thin set on the floor, get the this guy down, and then I like to fill these voids. So I like to take this thing and put mud in all of this gap here and uh, go ahead and fill it up with mud and then push my drain down into the mud so it's really firm and sturdy. So that's what we're doing. So what I'm doing right now is I'm 
just taking thin set on a margin trowel and I'm pushing it down into the um, opening here where the tr drain body will rest. And I'm going to go ahead and put, I'm actually going to taper it to match the shape of the drain. And we're going to go ahead and get this filled. So that looks pretty good. And now we're gonna move on to the next step, which is thin setting the floor and getting the pan set down. So now we've got the mud laid in the whole shower pan. And what I like to do next is, now my drain is kind of in place temporarily. It's got thin set under it, supporting it. I've got my mud down. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bead of caulk and I'm gonna run it down this whole edge, this whole edge, and then back of course down this edge as well and that's going to caulk that shower pan right to the curdy board the curdy pan is made of foam as well so it'll bond really well and we'll just go ahead and get all that caulked in and that'll just be a, another way that we're going to waterproof each individual corner now with our piece of two inch in and this piece is merely for support of the toilet because that's going to be flat so this guy is flat the rest of the pan will be sloped. So now I'm gonna place a bead of caulking on the front edge of it as well to seal between the pan and the two inch. And then we'll go ahead and get the pan installed. So now we get to work on the drain um, flashing here. And you go ahead and remove all this tape that they put on there to begin with. I like to peel it all, even the do not step one because Thin set doesn't stick very well to tape. So go ahead and pull all of this stuff. And then I like to do just kind of a dry fold. So I'll go ahead and fold all this up. See how you want it to lay. Get a good idea of what you're working with. In these corners, you're gonna to wanna to fold rather than cut. If you cut them, you're gonna kinda of be asking for a leak. So you always wanna to try to fold stuff if you can. If you can. And uh, again, this is one of those areas over here where I would prefer to not have a buildup, but it's gonna be somewhat impossible to do. So we'll go ahead and fold everything and that'll keep it um, Keep it happy, keep it from leaking. So we're ready to go ahead and put some thin set on the wall here. Remove another sticker. And then again, just like before, we wanna go ahead and this mortar into this backer board because trust me it helps and be very careful when you're doing this because this steel trowel will pierce this fabric so you definitely got to have your wits about you and not not accidentally cut this fabric if you cut it um, which happens very rarely but if it does happen, um, I would recommend caulking it from the back and from the front to prevent any future leaks. So now that that's done, we can go ahead and grab our margin trowel here. And now we're gonna flip this up. So we're gonna push this up all the way into the corners on both sides. 
And then we're gonna start pulling the thin set out from behind it, essentially. And what this is doing is this is keying it into the back of this material. It's also getting rid of any excess. And I like to get rid of 90%, I mean, I get rid of a lot of the mud. I don't like to leave a lot of mud back there because like I said before, it'll build out your wall here at the bottom and make it really unpleasant to uh, get your tile set well and flat. I'm a big stickler for flat tile installation. So, and this drain has a plastic cover on it. Leave that until you're completely done. You won't peel that off until you're completely done with the project. There's the back. Now for the sides, we do pretty much the same thing. Except for over here, we've got some folds we need to take care of. So I'll probably do this more with the margin trowel. And then on this front, on this front edge, we can, we'll go ahead and do the same thing we did on the back. We'll apply a liberal amount of thin set and get it tucked all the way up into that little spot here where you can see the gray foam. It's pretty important to get it in there as far as you can. Smooth it out some. I try to end with my striations in the mud facing the way that the, you want the air to exit. I don't know if it helps, but in my opinion, it does. And then we can do the corners here real quick. And we can pretty much work this from the inside out, coming through and pulling the mud out from behind the material. And you can use the bigger trowel too if you've got enough room to do it. This is extreme, this is the tightest shower I've ever worked in. So this is kind of difficult to film and do the work and everything just because it's so tight. Now in the corners, you're gonna do a fold. So this one, I think, will go. How will this one go? We want it to fold behind like that. And, and land with a square corner on the inside. And uh, everything looks pretty good and it's pretty square for the most part. So happy with that. The next thing that we're gonna do is around the corners. So starting here all the way around, we're actually gonna overlap some zip caulking up onto this thin set and we're gonna caulk all of our corners in real well, get them nice and tight. And we've already got one bead 
that is sitting between the pan and the wall. So this second bead is just kind of a accessory bead that's going to help uh, keep everything waterproofed real tight. And finally, here is our prep shower. We've got every corner caulked in, screws spotted, pan installed, trench drain installed, and if we were getting this inspected, we would do a flood test on it next, which I'm not going to do, um, just because I'm pretty confident. So I'm going to go ahead and skip a flood test, but conventionally speaking, if you were to do this in a house, you'd have to flood test it to get a approval by a building inspector. But this is ready to go, so now it's on to setting tile. Part two. All right, so that sums up the tile prep for the shower in Overland One, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was uh, somewhat challenging to do because it was so small. I'm used to doing uh, either a normal size three by five shower or something that's ridiculously large, like five by 15 foot. So doing something that was two foot by three foot was a little out of my norm and uh, it presents its own challenges like filming so sorry if there wasn't quite as much detail as you were hoping for but with the limitations of being able to video what I'm doing with me in the way um, made it a little difficult so I hope it was thorough enough I hope you guys enjoyed it and moving on from here we'll do part two which is tiling so that will be a video directly after this one. So tune into that one and see the tiling process.